blood. Blood of Jesus. Amen. Are you listening to me? What can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing. No blood of an animal. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. As a man would come and lay his hands upon the head of that animal, his sins would be imputed into that animal. And then that animal had to be put to death because now my sins became the sins of this pure, spotless animal. On the cross of Calvary, please hear me, I'm going to close with this. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ became that pure, spotless Lamb of God. So that ever, from His blood until He comes back, whenever somebody comes and lifts their hands and says, I need Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, you are metaphorically placing your hand upon the head of this Lamb of God without spot and wrinkle. And all your sins are imputed into His spotless body and His purity, His spotless nature is now imputed back to me. Hallelujah. And now when the Father looks at me, He says, that son looks like a pure spotless lamb. He looks just like my son, Jesus Christ, because He is washed in my son's blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me, church? We don't stand here in our own strength. We don't stand here in our own repentance. We don't stand here in our own words, but we stand because of the blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. Now go with me to Hebrews chapter 10 as I close with this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With what I just said, put it in context in verse number 10, chapter 10, verse 1. Are you there with me? Chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow. Say shadow. It's not the real thing, beloved. It's just a shadow. For the law having a shadow of the things to come and not, not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they continually, which they offer continually year by year can make those who approach perfect. The blood of bulls and goats cannot make us perfect. For then have they not have ceased to be offered. Why? For the worshiper once purified. Because if it was a pure blood, if it was a pure animal, all it required was one sacrifice forever. Amen. Amen. For the worshiper once purified would have no more consciousness of sin. Now watch this. But in those sacrifices, what sacrifices? In those yearly sacrifices, there was a reminder of sin every year. God was trying to remove the reminder of sin, but the sacrifice in itself became a constant reminder of sin. Keep reading with me. But in those sacrifices, as a man of for it is not possible, are you with me, that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. Jump down with me, please, to verse number 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm making up for your whole month of Bible reading. That's good. Keep saying with me. Verse 11, and every priest stands ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never, never, are you here with me? Never take away sins. But, somebody shout but. Give me a loud but. But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, but are you reading this with me? For by one offering, he has perfected forever. Hallelujah. By one offering, he has perfected till the next time. How long does this blood perfect in church? Forever. Hallelujah. Forever. Forever. That way the believer need not ever live in guilt and shame. Need not ever live in fear of judgment. Need not ever walk around being afraid of judgment. Because this blood has washed me. Washed me. Not for one year only. Not to the next time, but this blood has washed me 
who are being sanctified. Who are being sanctified. While he continues to sanctify us, my position on the outside is perfect. Perfect. I am not perfect. I've been made perfect. Amen. You and I are not perfect. We have been made perfect. God imputed his perfection to us through his blood. Amen. When we stand under the blood, it is no longer my sin or my righteousness. It is no longer how much I did this or how much I didn't do this that matters. There is only one thing that matters. Whose blood is over you? Whose blood is over you? Is it your blood? Is it your effort? Is it bulls and goats? Is it your own strength? Is it your own prayer? Or is it the blood of a perfect lamb who once and forever has perfected me? Doing away with sin so that now when I come before the Father, listen to me, I don't have to be afraid of judgment. Perfect love casts out fear. I can come boldly, not based on what I did or didn't do, but because of the blood of Jesus. And when the judge of heaven says, what do you plead, sir? What do you plead? What is your plead? I only have one thing to say. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I don't plead my works. I don't plead my prayer life. Because some days I do, some days I don't. I don't plead my goodness. I don't plead my, my, what I did or my righteousness. I plead only one thing. The blood of Jesus Christ. Because this blood is alive. It is not a blood that dried up. There is a fountain filled with blood that even to this day is flowing through my veins. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, If you are in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship. Hallelujah. It is not based on what I do or don't do. It's about me staying in the light. Who is the light church? What is his name? His name is Jesus, Amen. the light of the world. If I come to Jesus Christ and accept him as my Lord and Savior, once and forever, he has made me perfect. And when I mess up, this blood, hallelujah, this blood is constantly washing me. It's constantly cleansing me. It's always washing me. It's always washing me. Why? Because he has made me perfect forever. Hallelujah. Give him glory in this church. Come on. Give him praise for that blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for this blood. Hallelujah for this blood. The reason my Jesus fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law. Is so now that requirement is upon him. Colossians says, now I am in Christ. I am in Christ. I am not in and out and in and out. I am in Christ. And nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Are you listening to me? If I am in Christ, if I am in Christ, then everything that needs to be fulfilled is fulfilled by the Christ that I live in. He fulfilled it so I don't have to. He fulfilled it so that through Him, I have a blessing. Now the mandate, the promise, and the oath of God is not God plus my obedience. It's God plus the obedience of Jesus Christ. And if I am in Christ, then God says, It is finished. Amen. Jesus, I wish I had three blue black guys and I beat the organ right now. It is finished. Amen. Amen. Here's the beautiful thing about this amazing grace. Romans chapter 6 says, Sin shall not have dominion. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only is this a blood that cleanses me and makes me see pure. Not only is this a blood that cleanses me and makes me look righteous. This is a blood that from the inside begins to sanctify me. That begins to purge me. This blood starts to cleanse me. Make my thoughts pure. Make my body pure. Make my life pure. And all of a sudden I'm falling in love with Jesus. Not because of something I did by my own efforts. But all of a sudden the Christ that lives in me who is in love with the Father. All of a sudden, I am in love with the Father. All of a sudden, I am in love with the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, I want to talk to Jesus. I want to read my Bible. I wake up in the morning and I say, good morning, sir. What can we do today? I wake up in the morning and I say, Holy Spirit, how can we have a good day? What do we do today? Who do we bless today? Now the devil has 
accuse you with. Because his weapons have been stripped. The only thing the devil could use against you, listen to me carefully, was the law. The only thing the devil could use against you was the law. That's why the word Hasatan, Satan, Hasatan. The word Satan literally means chief prosecutor. Chief prosecutor. He is the chief accuser. That's why the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Boy, it's really quiet in this church. I'm going to keep <laughs> The accuser of the brethren. He is the one who brings accusation. Here's the amazing thing about the word accusation. It doesn't mean he's lying. He is bringing a true, a true judgment against you. He's bringing a real thing you did. And you're saying, like, oh Lord, what do I do? And here's the funny thing. Some of us say, I got this, I got this case. And there is a defender who wants to defend my case. The Bible calls him my mediator. Hallelujah. He calls him my mediator. He says, I got this. Sir. Let me fight this one for you. Let me fight this one for you. Let me take on this case. And sometimes we church people go, no, 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 I got this. It's okay, Jesus. Here's the funny thing. He is the attorney, prosecutor of the law. He knows the law inside and out even better than we do. The devil knows every in and out. He knows every way out. He knows how to trap you if you did this, but you didn't do that. The whole point of the law is that you would fail. And yet we take it upon ourselves to defend. Well, there's a mediator there. There's a mediator there who says, he sinned, he sinned. But when we come to Jesus and we say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, save me. He steps in and says, I got this case. I got this case. I got this case. And they say, who are you? Everything in me wants to say, I am guilty. I am the sinner. But the mediator steps in. Steps in and says, excuse me. Excuse me. Who is the guilty one? Who is the guilty one? Zach, son of Adam. He is the guilty one. Zach, son of Adam. Because I was born and conceived in sin. Because of my father Adam. And because of that, I am justly sinful. I am guilty as sin. But something happened.